so this is under the guise of you know the message of this show is to that the I our view is that the oligarchy and the establishment is trying to divide us and they're using COVID to do it and vaccines and every kind of thing that to do it. And my our, our push here at this show is don't blame your neighbor for the pain you're experiencing because of COVID or the COVID lockdowns or policies, but keep your eye on the oligarchy. And so in that spirit, uh, um, we had uh, Max Blumenthal on and we were talking about uh, people who are. Um, so I've been injured from the jab and so which I have to now live with and who knows for how long, maybe the rest of my life. But um, uh, we were talking about people who were punching down or shaming people for talking about their bad reactions to the jab. And Max Blumenthal said this. I saw uh, Graham Elwood do that on a few days ago on Twitter. Someone talking about being injured by the vaccine and him just mocking them. Just I what, just, what, what, like that, that is one of the saddest things to witness is to see people getting mocked and attacked and ostracized because they have the, to, they have the temerity. They dare to say that they were injured by one of these vaccines. I mean, it's happened to some people now. Um, it, uh, at first in Max's defense, that does happen all the time. People have mocked me. Uh, people called me a liar. People called me an anti-vaxxer. People called me all kinds of things. Of course, we know what happened to Eric. Uh, what is his Clapton. name? Eric Clapton. We saw what happened. All of a sudden he became a pariah and, the, and a racist and everything. And so I want to get so, and so that does happen. But here's, here's what Graham said. So I wanted just to be clear, this is what Graham said. Uh, so the woman said, I did the shot for the greater good, then got a mini stroke from Moderna and have found out the most of the left is blind to vaccine injuries and the rest have no sympathy. So that's what she said. And Graham said this. This is what he said. So get rid of any medication that someone has had an adverse reaction or outlaw zinc as my ex-wife is allergic to it. If we didn't have the vaccine and did herd immunity, over two million would be dead. All medicine is bad. No gray area. Now, uh, Graham, that doesn't seem like you were mocking her. That seems like you were making arguments. And they may, maybe they were sarcastic arguments, maybe, but that, so that, so I would like to clear up the record and I didn't, wasn't aware of what the thing said. And, um, I didn't want to make a bigger deal out of it when it happened on the show. I didn't want to, you know, go look up the tweet and all that stuff. So anyway, so there it is. And now I'm, we're going to go over this and I'm going to point out all the things I think are wrong about this tweet, but I wouldn't, you that is that that is you just having a debate, I think. So I will. Uh, so go yeah, ahead. I'll yes. throw it to you. OK. Yeah. And so uh, I appreciate you having me on the show, because one of the things I remember when Kyle Kalinske just made videos about you, I said on my show, I said he's a coward for not calling Jimmy up. If you're real friends, you call him up. I called you up when I finally saw this and was like, what the hell? I was a little mad. Um I don't know Blumenthal and I'm, and I'm, you know, he goes, it's such a, whatever he said, it's a sad state. Well, it's a sad state Blumenthal that you did to me what people have done to you. You didn't read the tweet. You didn't, you, you said, I said things I didn't say. I didn't write, ha ha, you got, I didn't write any of that. First of all, I don't know this woman. I don't know who she is. I'm not saying she's a liar. I'm saying, I don't know. And she's purporting stuff out there that I have, there's no, the vaccine gave me a stroke. I don't know. Is that what her doctor said? Have they studied this information? Does she have a pre-existing condition? We don't know any of these things. Maybe I'm guilty of not saying at the very top, I'm sorry that happened to you, which I am. I'm not, I have mocked nobody that's had any sort of um, adverse effect to the vaccine. Not at all. Uh, and then I just ask questions because this is the thing we're getting. The problem we're having is it's just getting into this absolutism. And you're either you're either pro vaccine or you're pro ivermectin. And America is so easily divided and propagandized that now we have to pick these teams. And that's not what I said. So I even did a little more investigating. Obviously, more than Max Blumenthal said. And I want to find she's she's a part of some Twitter feed. This was turned on to me by Tina Desiree, who's at Status Quo. And I, I just want to show you these other tweets that are in this group. Again, I don't know these people. I'm not saying anything. 
But this is one right here. Just to make it clear, Brooke had a condition that left her more vulnerable to clotting. After she got vaccinated, she had clotting. She blames it on the vaccine, not the condition without evidence. Okay, I don't even know if that's true. But that's what was said in this in this thread that these people are, including this woman, Brooke, who I do not know. Then this gentleman said this, I'm sorry about her situation, but when she goes and spreads vax denial and misinformation, it's still a big problem. Side effects are a part of medicine. If you have side effects from vaccines, don't take them, but don't come on here and start spreading Fox News propaganda. Again, that's that guy's opinion, not mine. My point in bringing those up is that there, there's some, there's some uh, disparity in what she's saying. And this is my point when, the, when I hear about people having adverse reactions to vaccines. Well, again, I, I bring this up because when I was married, my wife was starting to come down with a cold. I always take Zycam, right? It works wonders on me. I know so many people, it shortens the cold. She went into anaphylactic shock. It was terrifying. We had to, and from that point forward, we had to keep Benadryl in the house and she could never have zinc. Now, do my point that I was making, because everyone on Twitter just flips out and, and then all these people piled on me, all these left, these so-called lefties, this is the, then we're going to get into a bigger discussion, I hope, about this, like, who's the real left thing, who have been attacked, Jen just piled on and said, oh, I can't believe Graham would say that. Even Fiorella from the convo couch said that. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. You guys are all doing the thing that has been done to you. And you think you're so much more woke and open-minded when in fact, you're all just having the same human reaction of you disagree with me, shut up, wrong. I'm going to put words into your mouth. I mean, this happened to me in July by big name uh, lefty activists. Yeah. I when I put, you know, I put out the tweet. People have the right to not take the vaccine live performance. This is when Ron and I were planning our tour, most of which got canceled. And I said, people have the right to not take the vaccine live performers who stand on stage in front of hundreds and thousands of people and take photos with them afterwards have the right to ask for proof of vaccine or test our bodies, our choice and implied third choice in there that I didn't write is you also don't have to come. And I got attacked. Vanessa Bealey, who I've had on my show, who's done a lot of fine work on Syria, she acted like I was, I, I, she literally said, you're making Goebbels laugh from his grave. So I'm making a dead Nazi laugh. And so it's appalling to me that the left acts just as crazy as the Hill bots. I mean, I'm starting to watch, you know, and Max Kaiser on your show the other day called us the lockdown left. So yeah, we love lockdowns. I love authoritarianism. I mean, I'm living in this castle that's paid for by Big Pharma and I love wearing a mask. I'm so glad my tour got canceled. Man, I love losing money. It's so great losing money. Um, and, and I just like, he then does the same thing. So this is, this is a kind of, his, you want to debate me about the, the, the issues of mandates and lockdowns? That's fine, but I have a right to say, I want to feel safe in a venue. And you're like, well, that's fake science. Oh, well, I don't think that it is. And neither do a majority of doctors and scientists. And so this is the problem I'm having. And we can get into the further discussions about the mandates and the vaccine and stuff like this. But if the statistics were overwhelming that people were having bad reactions to vaccines, then I'd be like, this is a bad idea, but it's not. And again, people can have bad reactions to zinc to anything else. I mean, penicillin, look at how penicillin has helped the world. I mean, it has transformed the world for decades. And there's still people who can't take it because that's how medicine in the human body works. We don't, it's, it's still an evolving science and we should have discussions and debates, but we can't do that anymore. So now I'm, I'm a pro-Nazi. I guess I love Nazis and big pharma and you're an anti-vax Trumper. So that's okay. Fuck off. Have a great day, Jimmy. The, the conversation's over. Okay, Graham. Thanks for coming on. And, um, <laughs> you know, I think, I hope we cleared it up. I think we got shit cleared up. I appreciate you name checking three more fucking people that I'm now going to have to have emails with. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're those I'm just quote. They, they, don't they, name they, anyone else Then I got to go. Look, I got it's kind of just don't name anyone. Stop name. Just right. say say this person said this and the, but don't say who the person because then I got to fucking do what I'm doing. now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. All right. Fair enough. You know what I mean? 
Uh, I mean, if they're, you know, uh, especially if they're friends of the show and stuff like that and blah, blah, blah. So now again, now I don't know. I would have to go back and check everything that you just said. I don't know if they said, I got to go look at their, so just, I don't know. Um, uh, so he, uh, so let me just, so let me, I, I thought you were pro mandate. I, I'm in favor of most of these mandates. Some of them, there. Some of the times, the government overreaches for sure. But for the most part, I see that mandates they they look they seem like they've worked to me. And I follow a fair amount of doctors and scientists that are like, "Hey, the mandates have worked." And this is an ever evolving situation. This is a once in a hundred year pandemic. But I'm not also I'm not a doctor. I've seen I, there's a threat, and I can show it to you as we get into it of people that are super critical doctors. Uh, you know, uh, viral and, you know, infectious disease scientists who are super critical. They're like, Biden hasn't done enough. So I, I think, you know, when mandates and, and then when people just say all mandates, I'm sorry, when I get told all mandates are authoritarian, well, then that's when I started making TikTok videos, poking all the holes in that because Jimmy, Medicare for all is a mandate. A Green New Deal is a mandate. You know what we're going to do? We're going to mandate that you stop working at an oil refinery and we're going to take that job where the government's going to take that job away and pay you to move into green energy. That's a mandate. So so all mandates are bad. I mean, and if you're and if and then I'm I keep hearing this who's the true lefty thing and that's that's disconcerting to me. Um okay, I I would say there's a big difference between uh uh you know, a governmental policy about where we're going to, um, how we're going to fight climate change and forcing someone to take a medical treatment that we all know has side effects and adverse effects. And we don't know what the long-term effects are and it is emergency use. And, and so those are, so that would be totally different. And so let well, me, so let uh, me go, go ahead. Can I just say that's your opinion why you think it's different? See, my opinion is that, I, I mean, part of the thing when everyone is like, well, the le how can you be this and be a lefty? I thought the left was about the greater good. See, I think I might, the, the research that I watch, and I'm not a doctor or scientist, but the, the overwhelming amount, like you cannot trust big pharma. Is big pharma corrupt? Absolutely. But most of the VAC science sound, is pretty sound from what I'm seeing. Again, I'm not qualified to say a doctor is, is, knows what they're talking about or not, only another, and that's how science works. Science gets, collects data. They got to go through studies. They, they got to, they got to hash it out amongst themselves. So, uh, you know, I think if, if every, if we had a 90% vaccination rate, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't, I wouldn't have had to cancel the tour. So you, I you and think I still be working. So I think that's a great jumping off point for me. Okay. So I'm going to tell you why I'm, uh, I disagree with what he just said about 90, if we got to 90% vaccination rate and why I think that's what's, I think it's that kind of uh, wrong, uh, wrong science that is fueling a lot of the animosity people have towards each other. So I think a lot of people are thinking if these asshole people would just get vaccinated, we could get out of this faster and we could go back to our normal life, which is what I thought too, which is why I got vaccinated. Uh, but, now I'm finding out that vaccinated or not, everyone is likely to get COVID-19 at some point. OK, so you're going to get it likely whether you're vaxxed or not. Sit down, brace yourself. This is from the Orange County Register. We're all going to get COVID-19, even if we're fully vaccinated. The idea that we're going to live our lives without ever getting it is a fantasy and a dangerous one, said Andrew Neumann, epidemiologist and demog demographer at UC Irvine. A lot of people just don't understand that. We're all going to get it. Uh, Dr. Bruce Patterson, a virologist and CEO, counts himself among the 90 percent of infectious disease and virology experts who believe COVID will become endemic, meaning it will hang around indefinitely like the flu. COVID is here to stay. We're not going to eradicate it. Ten years from now, there's still going to be COVID, Dr. Neumer said. In fact, the WHO says it won't ever be eradicated. Global health experts expect COVID-19 to circulate and mutate in a similar way to the flu. So that means it will be here forever. And even 
uh, Joe Biden's director of COVID response, former, said that given this is given Delta's contagiousness. Now we have Omicron, which is way more contagious. The the fitness of the future mutations in order to beat it. This means SARS CoV two will be contagious enough that everyone will get the virus. So we're all going to get the virus. And what we tell people here: if you feel like you are vulnerable to the virus, you should get vaccinated, and uh, because it will uh, prevent you from serious disease or illness most of the time, not all the time. So that's what we tell people. Uh, now. The, uh, the big reason for the only reason I can see why you would want someone else to get vaccinated is because you would think we could a vaccinate our way out of this pandemic. And we can't now. Everyone agrees with that. Now, uh, you can't vaccinate. And that's what Dr. Robert Malone said on this show a couple of months ago when he said you can't vaccinate your way out of this out of a pandemic like this and you can't do it with a leaky vaccine. And what does a leaky vaccine mean? That means that even if you get vaccinated, you can still transmit the virus and you can still contract it. And in fact, this is what the FDA says. This is from November 21st. Last time I looked it up. It says, does the vaccine stop the spread of the disease? It says most vaccines that protect from viral illnesses also reduce transmission of the virus that causes the disease by those who are vaccinated. While it is hoped this will be the case, the scientific community does not yet know if the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine will reduce such transmission. And that's from the FDA.gov. So if you're going to get the virus anyway, we're all going to get it. And it doesn't stop transmission, according to the FDA, although YouTube makes me say that it does reduce transmission, even though this is what the FDA says. So just so you know, YouTube says it does reduce. But if it, so, let's I'll give YouTube that it does reduce, but we're all going to get it anyway. So no one denies that, that we're likely to all get it anyway, and that it's going to be endemic, meaning forever. And an adult gets the flu twice every 10 years. Uh, so we'll probably be getting it like that. So that would be why scientifically, uh, I'm totally against mandates. I'm not against the vaccine. And, and if you, again, if you feel like you, if vulnerable populations should all be, that was out when Robert Malone explained that on this show that you can't vaccinate your way out of it. And in fact, the most vaccinated countries on earth are having some of the biggest Oh, uh, virus outbreaks, right? Look at, uh, um, oh, I'm, I'm can't think of that country, oh. Oh. that country that just canceled Christmas. They're a hundred percent vaccinated and they just canceled Christmas. We saw what happened with Iceland. Same thing that uh, Israel, they had huge outbreaks. So, and they call them breakthrough cases, which other people just call them cases. Um, so if the vaccine, if you could still get it, still transmit it, and we're all going to get it, why do and you can also get protection if you natural immunity once you get it, because tens of millions of people have already had it in the United States. And now they have natural immunity and they're saying if you get it. So if you can get all those things, I don't think you should be able to mandate uh, a vaccine that's super authoritarian. And I also believe lockdowns are authoritarian, but I'll stop there and we'll get okay. to lockdowns later. But you can respond to what I just said. Absolutely. Um, yeah, some very valid points here. The thing that this is, this is, there's several issues that I've heard. Again, other virologists say, if we would have vaccinated like the whole world, this is part of the problem too, is there's, there's vaccine apartheid, right? So the pharmaceutical companies can't make any money in third world countries because the third world countries can't really pay for it. Or they got to pay it at a discount price or whatever. So one of the things is that, that I, that I've been told, again, I'm not a scientist, neither are you, um, is that the more unvaccinated people, the easier it is for the virus to spread and mutate and become more dangerous. Okay. So there's that. The other thing I have not heard from you today or on any of the shows I've watched, I can't say I've watched everything you put out there. And this is a problem I'm having with some of the anti-mandate crowd. Well, the majority of the anti-mandate crowd, there's no mention of hospitalizations. So in August and in September, all over the country, but in Hawaii, where I live, we were maxed out. And with COVID patients, 90% of the, the COVID patients that were in the hospital were unvaccinated. There was an accident between a school bus and a truck, and the school bus was empty. And the head of the Queens Hospital here in Oahu said, if there was children on that bus, we would not have been able to handle it. And this is there's all these instances of people, and these aren't tracked in the 800,000 people 
that have died because they had an adverse reaction to COVID. We, we don't, I don't hear the mandate crowd talking about the 800,000 dead people. We're also not uh, talking about all the people that were that couldn't get into a hospital because it was full. And and then I and I I watch on a lot of social media. I follow a lot of just healthcare workers, and especially in August and September. And I'm worried it's going to happen again. They're just in their cars making TikToks, going, "Everybody's dying, and if we were more vaccinated, the hospitals wouldn't be full." So when the hospitals are full with unvaccinated COVID patients, Jimmy, if you have a stroke, a heart attack, God forbid, you have a you were you were Steph get injured, a heart attack, whatever car accident, they might not have bed space for you. And that's the poor, that's, that's where I'm mad at the, at the anti-mandate left. Cause I thought the left was about, we're all in this together. I'm pretty healthy. Maybe I could get COVID and not have any reaction to it. Although I just heard of a, of some, of a healthy person in my yoga class who uh, surfed, never great shape, got COVID and she just passed away. So my, my point is I got it because I was like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to spread it to anybody. Cause maybe I would get it cause I'm healthy. There's, there's some studies and I can't verify these studies, but I've heard some studies that like vegetarians and vegans are less likely to have severe effects or less likely to get hospitalized. I don't know. Let's get more data. 78% of COVID deaths are people that are overweight. All right, let's get more data. But the hospitalizations, I never hear anybody in the anti-mandate side talk about that. And that's terrifying. Okay. So that's your argument. So one of your arguments for pro mandate is hospital space. Yes. So you, and then would, in a second, we'll get to it. We're going to get to when, when, if you want to address that, that's fine. Yeah, I, I don't want to mix too many things. Cause we already talked about viral escape that I have to get to and the numbers, but so you, I just want to clarify, you're saying that that is one of your arguments to be pro mandate is because it, the people get COVID and then they clog up the ICUs and we don't have enough beds, right? Correct. Okay. So the, there's a lot to say about that. I say the hospitalization rate uh, of COVID is 0.89%. So that includes the obese. That includes people with comorbidities. That includes the elderly. So the hospitalization rate of people who catch COVID is 0.89%. That's a fact. So it's less than 1%. And now with Omicron, let me find that. This is going to be interesting. Um, so Omicron, they say, has an 80% lower risk of hospitalization. So that's great. If, I, 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 let let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I, so point. Can I just interject this real quick. Okay. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to win. I'm not trying to say I'm right. I'm what I'm for whatever is going to actually work. Right. Me too. So, me too. So, I don't want Omicron to be bad and the hospitals are full. So I can neither. say I told you so. I know. I hope Omicron is like a fucking a sneeze, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. So if, if you have a 0.89% hospitalization rate and you, uh, 80% less is 0.71%. So the hospitalization rate for Omicron could be is projected to be 0.1.78%. If that if this is true, that's true. Okay? And here it is. The WHO says vaccine booster programs will prolong COVID crisis. No country can boost its way out of this pandemic. So, I don't it's unconscionable to me that you would force someone to take a medical treatment that you know is going to have a, a side effects to a certain amount of people, a uh, certain amount of people are going to get myocarditis. How many? Well, let's look. Uh, I got it right here. So they're stopping using so that so that's I'll, before I can move on to the, another thing. So so that's my uh, response to the the bed thing. We have a 0.89% hospitalization rate, and the Omicron is going to be even lower. And if we don't have enough hospital beds to help out the richest country in the world during a pandemic, maybe we need to have some redundancy and stop letting hedge fund managers staff our fucking hospitals. I've been closing hospitals. They went from 73,000 hospital beds in New York State to 43,000 in 20 years. That is backwards. And so we know what's going on. They can't, So... Uh, and if this was, if this was about 
So that's just, so I want to deal with that. So that's the hospitalization rate. And people say, oh, you're going to clog it up. Well, who who gets to get go into the ICU? What, if you're a smoker, do you get to go into the ICU? If you need a lung transplant, if you're obese, if you eat too much sugar, if you're an alcoholic, hey, if you're a drunk driver, do you get to get that ICU bed? So if you're a rock climber, do you get that ICU bed if you fall? So if so, this whole idea that Ed, we're going to start now having a list of risky behaviors that's going to make me angry at you for needing a hospital bed. Uh, that's just propaganda. That's how I see it, that that is propaganda from the establishment uh, that has a money motivation behind it. It's money motivation to get rid of the hospital beds and it's money motivation for you to get the vaccine. And well, again, I'm not saying don't get it. I'm saying you to force someone to get a vaccine that we know there's going to be uh, side effects. Let me just make this point. Uh, So here it is. Item of interest. The NIH is funding a study to assess the potential side effects of vaccinations on women's menstruation. That was August 30th. That's a year long study. We're not going to know the results of that study for a year. How can you force someone to get a mandate on shit that they don't even know about? And it hasn't been fully studied. That's right there. And now they're trying to take these away from people because they're getting hurt so often. Sweden, Denmark, they pause Moderna's jab. Iceland joins Sweden and Denmark and pause the jab. Uh, here's Al- in Canada. Some Albertans asked to turn down the Moderna vaccine. Alberta's top doctor is recommending that those aged 12 to 29 avoid the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. Approxim- How many people get the myocarditis? Approximately one case of myocarditis is found per 7,000 doses in 12 to 17 year old males with Pfizer. One case per 2,000 doses with the Moderna. And now they're even admitting that a guy died directly as a result from the vaccine. A New Zealand vaccinated, you have a one in 50 chance of dying. A, a so new, like, do, I guess you Graham, ask yourself, Graham, no, this, that's not the point. And let me make my point and then I'll give okay. it to you. I'm going to hand it to you. So now they're even admitting in the USA today that a guy died as a direct result from myocarditis from the vaccine. So, and, and now we have, uh, so I don't know how you can, ma- I'm not saying, again, you can judge whether the risk is worth taking. If you think the risk from the vaccine is lower than the risk from COVID, then you should take the vaccine. But if you think the risk, if you don't would rather not take that risk of the vaccine and just take the risk from COVID, that should be your choice. I don't know how you can force someone to take a, a treatment that you know is going to injure some of those people. Go, go, go ahead. Well, I, I mean, you can talk you can bring up those statistics all you want about those, those articles about the hospital beds, but the reality was the hospitals were full during Delta and, and of unvaccinated COVID patients. So like that was happening. That was a real time thing that was happening. And had you been injured during that time, Jimmy, you might not have gotten a hospital bed. Now, the point that the, 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 a for-profit healthcare system takes away hospital beds. That's a great thing. We should all be talking about that. We should, that should be, that should be, and again, the corporate media is not going to talk about that because they get money from these big companies and you got people like Cuomo who did this. So that's a fine, that is a fine argument to say we, the richest country in the world should not be getting rid of hospital beds. We should be adding them, especially in the middle of a pandemic. I, that's a, I'm, I agree with you on that. I'm Medicare for all, which is a government mandate. Um, so uh, <laughs> the other thing too you bring up some articles and some science. Well, I, you know, I've got some articles too of some doctors and you, you brought up Malone. You bring up Malone, you had him on your show. I'm not qualified to disagree with Malone. I don't know. He's a doctor. And I'm going to bring up some but doctors. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't, don't change the subject. Let's stay, okay. let's stay on the same subject. So we, we talked about hospital beds. You got the okay. last word on hospital beds. Now let's move on to vaccine injury. So I just showed you yes, one, one out of 2,000 people uh, of doses are going to cause myocarditis from the Moderna from kids from up to, to 29 years old. Wh- how can you force someone to take that if you know one out of every 2,000 of them is going to get injured? Unfortunately, Jimmy, I mean, look, 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 well, I guess I had, I had no, I mean, I felt sick for about 30 hours after the vaccine and the booster um, because I'm a sellout to big pharma and I love Nazis. Um, <laughs> so, I didn't have any serious adverse effects, right? I didn't. Now you did. And I'm glad you talked about it. And, and I saw your interview on Joe Rogan. I actually watched it again this morning. 
And I'm, it's good that people are talking about it. We should be talking about it. People should not be shamed for talking about it. But one of the things, I mean, I would, I, do you, would you rather have the adverse side effects or being dead? Because you told me when this thing first happened, you said, Graham, if I get this, I'm dead because of your pre existing condition, which is, that's valid. And people have to ask themselves that. I mean, what do you, do you want to be dead? I mean, the, the, the vaccine, it, it's, and it's unfortunately, we're in a global pandemic. So we're trying to minimize the number of deaths. And that's, I mean, it, 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 it's a horrible thing to ask. But, but, and when you talked about it on the Joe Rogan show, you didn't want to go on the specifics of it. Okay, that's fine. But there's a lot of things. And this is what I'm seeing in some people who are getting vax injured. Is there, and I'm not saying you deliberately did this or this, this other, anybody else is like deliberately not talking about it, but you got to talk about, we're going to get the data and talk about everything. You should talk about all the medications you were on when you got that, right? That's part of it. What your bone disease is, because we got to get all the data is, is a blood type more susceptible is these interactions of these medications make it more susceptible. So that's the other thing. When I see these articles, like, Oh, a guy died from the vaccine and he was healthy. The media always paints this broad brush. You don't know what was the person doing drugs. Do they drink too much? Do they, were they, did they do blow last night? I don't know. None of I mean, when I get my physical, they always ask me, do you drink? Do you smoke? Do you take drugs? Do you, are you, you have any allergies to medicines? So all so, of those are factors that we're not, that I'm not hearing in any of this. I'm just hearing this, this broad brush being, being painted. Well, I can tell you, uh, let me, before I answer this, cause I forgot one point you made earlier about, uh, that we disagree on was that you were under, you were, you're operating under the theory that the more people that get vaccinated, uh, the less bad, uh, variants will have. Like it's the people who are unvaccinated that lets the virus then mutate and become more deadly. Now, yes. everything I've read. And the hospitalizations are tied to that. That's so, not a separate issue. That's oh, a part of that. That's a part of that. Okay. My, that's a part of my argument. So I'll just, what I've been told and what I, what Dr. Robert Malone said on the show was that the exact opposite happens. And that's what the uh, Barrington declaration was about they were saying targeted vaccinations to people who are vulnerable and what robert malone said on this show was that because uh you want the virus to go through healthy people and then mutate to become more infectious and less pathogenic that's what it does in healthy people it and if you over vaccinate you create a thing called viral escape which is like when you use antibiotics too often in farm animals and then they become resistant and he's like that's mm -hmm. the same that's what robert malone said on the show that that same thing could happen with this virus and that viruses aren't linear that you don't know what's going to happen with a third boost i mean uh, uh, uh vaccinations aren't linear you don't know what's going to happen with the third one he said it could shut down your immune system you don't know what's going to happen with the fourth one and so that's where we disagree. So I, I, you, can I show you some doctors that don't agree with Malone? Cause this is part of the problem. Sure, that I think sure. I've, I've, I've had Jimmy is, and when I watch your show and this is why I've kind of, it, it, it's started to frustrate me is because sometimes I watch your show and it's, it's like, there's only two doctors in the world. There's Fauci and Malone. And like, <laughs> there's, there's again, I don't, I'm not qualified to disagree with Dr. Malone. That all sounds great to me. And if everyone agreed with Malone, great, I would too. But this is how science works is you need peer reviewed studies. So there's a bunch of doctors and, and, and virologists and who are like, they don't, uh, they don't agree with him. So, so first of all, there's, um, all right, can I share? And, a and while you're, yeah, while you're, by, by the way, but while you're looking for that, let me just say this. Because now I'm in a position also with Max Blumenthal now and Friorella and Max Kaiser. So before I forget, not Max Kaiser. I, Max Kaiser is great. He, oh, okay, he, I didn't oh. say Max. Max Kaiser loves Bitcoin. I love. Max. Maybe I said his name by mistake. Okay, it's so not Max Kaiser. Maybe I meant I meant Blumenthal. Kaiser's he's a Bitcoin guy. I love him. So let me just say that um, you know Max has been Max is a great journalist. They do great work. I love Max. He's a, been a valuable asset to this show. I have all the respect in the world for him. And, uh, you know, he's informed me on COVID a lot more than anybody, probably, maybe. 
uh, maybe him and Dr. Malone, and now Robert F. Kennedy Jr. I'm reading that book. It's unbelievable. So I don't want to. Uh, I I could. Uh, I I share Max. I share Max Blumenthal's uh, chagrin with the left and the people who are uh, doing what he's uh, said people were doing, and and, uh, and so and uh, he might have conflated your tweet and made it worse than it was. I just don't. I don't want to shit on Max at all because I have nothing but respect for Max, and um, I'm sure he would love to have a conversation about this with anybody, including you. So Okay. I mean, what he did to me was shitty. I don't know this guy. And then his term, the lockdown left, is laughable. I, li I like that term, actually. Okay. Well, I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> and I'll say this. Uh, he's He should also, when he's on your show, he should not try to be funny. Uh, I'll just come on. That. He's funny. Now, Jimmy, I'm not, I don't try to be a journalist. He shouldn't try no, to be a comedian. Come All on. Right? That, this, he's Jimmy, very, you're a comic. Ma put your comic hat on. Okay. We'll disagree on the... Ma the quality of Max is a comedy. I like it. Okay, he's not a professional comedian. So uh, um, I don't. I don't know. I don't think he's ever been paid to do comedy, but uh, he could do. I saw him do a stand-up set on video. It was actually pretty funny. So anyway, now um, I want to show you. So I, you're going to show, show me Doctor Robert Malone, right? This is what you're doing. This is the guy. This is. I'm going to share the screen. Uh, the host has disabled this. Can you guys allow me to do it through Zoom? All right. I mean, I could bring it on the screen behind me. What is whatever's easier? Yeah, I could do that. Could you do okay. that? All right. So again, this is. I don't know how how well you can see it, but um, this is Eric Topol, and he's on Twitter, and there's this thread, and and who is he? He's a physician, scientist, author, and editor. Okay. So he said here, um, debunking another myth: the mRNA vaccines didn't just suddenly appear in 2020 for COVID-19. Many had been tested years previously for other viruses, status of four years ago in this table and shown to be safe. Now, these are a bunch of doctors and scientists, and they get into these discussions, and I, half of it, I, I, it's, I can't even get into it because I'm not, but, but these doctors are discussing and debating it. On a related matter, Dr. Alone, who suits he is the inventor of mRNA vaccines and actively cultivate vaccine skepticism, is not and has admitted this fact. Doctors uh, Kakiro and Weissman Lab are credited with the seminal work that led to the MRA vaccines. And in fact, uh, there was an article in um, this magazine, Logically, um, that said Malone invented mRNA. And he wrote, Malone himself said, Malone reached out to Logically stating that he did not invent the mRNA vaccines, but insisted the vaccine technology platform. He also presented us with copies of nine patents, none of which showed that he invented the mRNA vaccine. Okay. I'm not trying to say Malone's a liar. I got him. I'm just saying there's doctors out there not agreeing with him. So I think that's part of the problem. I keep hearing you say Malone, Malone, Malone. I'm like, that's great. But there's people out there that don't agree with them. And this is the thing that's important with science. The scientists and the doctors should debate this. Good. I don't have the brain. You don't have the brain to do this. We, but we should allow, we should have this discussion rather than turning this into another team to pick, you know, and, and then if you're not on, if you're not Malone, you're not the true left. And I've heard, and this is part of the thing. And I said this in the phone call yesterday is you've said numerous times, you're not the true left. If you're anti mandates, you're not the true left. Well, that's a personal offense to me. You want to disagree with my stance on the, on my mandates. Great, Jimmy. I respect that. But who are you to say who's the left and who isn't like, are, are we going to like, I drive an electric car. So any, any lefty that drives a, a gas car, not, not the true left, you're fucking selling out to big oil. I mean, that's like, we're getting into this this thing that's helping divide the left. And obviously we agree. We don't want to be part of dividing the left, but that, that when I hear that statement, how can I not feel insulted by that? And anyone, any, any, anybody in our world that agrees with me is now not the true left. I mean, is Lee camp who's friends with me. He's friends with you. He's friends with Max Blumenthal. Is he not? And I'm not name checking Lee camp. I, I had a conversation with him. Like, is he not the true? I mean, that, that's the thing. I'm the problem I'm having is we're getting into this team thing. And, and, when there's people out there and I'm not, I'm, again, I'm not like Graham takes down Malone. I'm not going to make a video that says that I'm just showing you that there's a bunch of people, these, these doctors and scientists that go into this thread. And then this guy fact checks Malone's pseudoscience and his lack of credibility. Now he's another doctor. If he wants to say pseudoscience, that's his, he gets to say that. I don't, 
Um, so let you me, know, and then they start talking about catonic liposome. Now they're talking doctor talk. Okay. I, 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 I don't know what they're so, saying. So, um, you know, I don't want to debate the credentials of Dr. Robert Malone because they did hit jobs on him. Uh, big Pharma and in the Atlantic run by fucking war criminals and funded sure. by Big Pharma. And, you know, uh, what he said was basic virology 101. And what he also was parroting or uh, in conjunction, he was uh, in conjunction with was that uh, the Barrington Declaration. Uh, and so what we're finding out, Graham, is that when those guys came up with the Barrington Declaration, which was about targeted lockdowns, targeted vaccinations, to do it in a way that had less pain for everybody. And uh, what happened was Fauci and the guy Collins at the NIH, they were like, we have to take this shit down because it's going to wreck our vaccine policy. It's going to not what Big Pharma wants, not what we want. It's And so it's now being revealed that uh, they would feed these garbage stories to the press. The press would feed them to uh, Fauci, and then they would get people to write hit pieces on them. Uh, and that's what happened. They called them three fringe virologists. The guys were Harvard virologists and Stanford virologists, and they were uh, anything uh, than far from fringe. Uh, they were all experts in their field, well-regarded and uh, published. So they're, so what they did was a hit piece on those guys with the Barrington Declaration, which is the same thing that they're doing to Robert Malone, the same thing they're doing to the, all the guys that are in doc, uh, uh, JFK's book. Look what they did to JFK, RFK Jr. Sure. Look what they did to him. And uh, so, and he's, what all he's doing is asking for the same thing you're asking for, Graham, which is like, hey, can we have a discussion about this without calling each other Nazis? And that's what I like to do. But I will say, no, so let's move on to your... Now your other your other point, which was about uh, lockdowns and don't the lockdown left, and you're not lefty if you're for lockdowns. I think it's okay to say that uh, a knee jerk reaction to lockdowns or lockdowns in general or the way they did lockdowns are not good from a lefty perspective, and that it is authoritarian to take away someone's rights just like that without any real debate about it. And we're doing it under the guise of science that comes from guys like Dr. Fauci, which we now find out has been lying to us and doing hit pieces on people and scientists, well-regarded scientists, who have different opinions on how to do this. So we weren't having this debate. We still haven't had that debate. Uh, and so now what they're doing is just character assassinations against the people who have different ideas than Dr. Fauci and Collins at the NIH. And so that's that's where we're left. So I'm skeptical of the whole COVID narrative and the vaccine narrative. Of course, I'm in a unique position because I got uh, severely injured by the vaccine. Now, when you say, Jimmy, we don't know, it might be your own. Uh, somehow it might be my fault because I had a pre-existing condition. That I didn't say your fault. Never use that word. Or it might be that. it might be because I had a pre-existing right. condition that when I got the vaccine, um, I got injured by it. So what? So what? And so you're still I, if I had a regular job, I'd still be mandated to get that vaccine and then I would get injured by it because I have this other thing. But what happened was I went into a study. Uh, they were uh, taking people like me who got injured by the jab. And the theory was that we had long covid just like people who had long covid. But we never we got it from the jab. So they have this test. I don't I'm not a scientist, but he showed me the test and he showed me the biomarkers. And he said, here's a person who has long covid. There's their biomarkers. And here's you. You have the same biomarkers as someone who has long covid. So you got it from they concluded I got it from the jab and they treated me then as if I had long covid. Uh, and at the time, the CDC was recommending that doctors doing studies like that use drugs like ivermectin to see how it worked. They were actually recommending. You would never know that if you watch the mainstream news because it's funded by Big Pharma. In fact, if you said that, they call you a horse dewormer. Uh, they still do it, by the way. They still do it. They still do it. So, um, so that's what happened. So I don't understand what the difference is if I was mandated and I have a... So, that's why you shouldn't have a mandate. That's that's what I'm saying, because people, you don't know what's going to happen. They could get injured. And now I'm injured and I'm still injured. And I get a headache every day. I get a neck ache every fucking day and worse uh, often. 
and it's horrible. So, and I don't know how long it's going to last. It's depressing. I'll tell you that. It's super depressing. And what's even more depressing is that people call me a horse dewormer guy. People call me an anti-vaxxer and people call me a liar when I, all I'm doing is telling the truth about this. But anyway, that's, we're getting into a different thing. Okay. That's uh, all valid. That's all valid. So what do you, I, so let me just put that question to you, Graham. What, what would you say to someone like me who now I'm going to be considered unvaxxed? In a couple, of, I am now already right because it's wanes after six months. So I'm, I'm, and so now in DC they're making the booster part of you're not vaxxed until you get the booster. So now what about somebody like me? And what about somebody? Well, just let's do that. What about somebody like me? Very valid question, and a, and a very thing that should be discussed and debated amongst scientists. Uh, and unfortunately, I would say politicians, but I don't know that our politicians are capable of such a thing. But the other question I would ask is. And again, this is just me projecting if I was in your position, I would have to ask myself, what happens if I get COVID? Is that going to be worse than than these symptoms from the vaccine? Right? Right. That's what you're right. That's that's and that's the choice that I should be able to make. I don't think you should mandate that for someone else. I should be able to make that choice. And especially since I found out after doing further research and now reading RFK Jr.'s book that they totally suppressed early treatments. They're, they've told I, I I don't know if I'm allowed to I'm not allowed to say them on YouTube, but we're on Rumble. But there are lots of early treatments that work and they fucking suppress them and they never talk about vitamin D. Doesn't that piss you off that they never talk about zinc, vitamin D, vitamin K and get your obesity, down, get your weight down. They never talk about that. Is it doesn't that drive you crazy, Graham? That's legitimate. Those are legitimate things to bring up. And I and I think what what you should be able to say, uh, get a medical exemption if that's what you need. If you were in a job where they said you got to get this, then those would be causes for you to get a medical exemption from getting the booster. I mean, I think that's that's a, that you have a legitimate case to get a medical. I mean, that people are given medical exemptions with the booster, with the vaccine, be it the first one, the second or the booster. Right. Yes. People can get medical exemptions. Yes. So that's to me. That's one of the things that's in place. And, and the bigger discussion here, I think, is obviously there's so many things about our broken Medicare system, and I know we agree on this, um, that would help fix, I mean, would end half of these arguments you and I are having. Um, and so it's, it's valid to bring them up to also show we have a broken healthcare system. We should have been doing testing I mean, I can show you some other doctors that are like Joe Biden's new rollout is awful because, you know, in other countries, tests are free and they've just been testing the shit out of everybody, which we didn't have. have I got a, I had to get a rapid test because I was exposed to somebody. I tested negative, but I had to pay ninety dollars because it wasn't covered by my insurance. That is then encouraging people to not get tested. And and all of the hospital bit, everything that we're talking about. I mean, a lot of the stuff here, we sort of. It's built on a foundation of stuff we agree on, <laughs> you know, that our healthcare system is broken. We need more hospital beds and all of that. And I think your situation, you should be given a medical exemption. What about these people? What about, so what, look at this though, Graham. So we know kids age 12 to 29, if they take the Moderna, one out of every 2000 doses is going to create myocarditis. One out of every 7,000 of the Pfizer's that was, that's according to the people up uh, Alberta's top doctor. So how can you mandate someone do that? That's a roll of the dice. How could you mandate that? Well, because the, I mean, how, how, what about all the people that have died? I mean, that's up to them, though, to to, to get it. So I, not necessarily. Hold on. What not about, so how does vaccinated if the vaccine vaccinated, you're, vaccinated okay. you're more likely to spread it? I mean, yeah, but th Graham, that's where that's where it feels like it's being selfish. No, Graham. But if you if you, does the vaccine protect you from the fucking virus or not? And if it protects you from the fucking virus, if it's good that so much so that you're going to make someone else take it. Then why don't you fucking believe it protects you? Why do you need someone else to take something to protect you? If it protects us, then you're protected if you took it, right? Right, but again, it comes back to the hospital beds. I mean, I oh, so now do you change? But that's the different argument. You just move the goalposts. No, I did not. You're saying someone else should fucking get vaccinated because they might infect me. That's what you said. Is it, well, yeah, they could infect me. They could be bring, now. I'm yeah, less but likely to have you go get the vaccine. Then if you're afraid of it, you're all going to get it. You agree. We're all going to get it. Right. Yes. 
And so I'm not go get vaccinated. About- so who Hold do you on. care if you get it from a vaccinated person or an unvaccinated person? Because you can still shed the virus when you're vaccinated. In fact, you have the same viral load for the first seven days. The point that I'm making, I, I, yes, me, Graham Elwood, I'm yes. vaccinated. So if I'm around an unvaccinated person, I'm less likely to, to get it. I'm less likely to have severe symptoms. And more importantly, I'm less likely to get hospitalized. That's why I took the vaccine, right? Right. But if they're going around other people, let's say they're around people that couldn't get the vaccine because they had a pre-existing condition. They're then putting them at risk. That bothers me. So that's a diff- that's a different story. That's what we know. No, no, no. Because no. you're thinking about no, just that, me, me, me. I'm no, thinking about we. No. That's the difference. No, I got the cr- vaccine because I'm a volunteer for the American Red Cross. And I'm like, I don't want to go into a disaster situation and potentially put somebody at risk because maybe I could get it and spread it more easier if I'm unvaccinated. Yeah, but cr- that's that's where I disagree. That's in the thing that bothers me is the I thought the left was about everybody working together. Together, everybody helping each other out. And I, all I hear is a lot of me, me, me from the anti-vax, anti-mandate crowd. Graham, that bothers me. Working together isn't isn't ordering people to take a medical procedure that you know is going to damage them. That no, is not working fucking them. together. Well, we know it's going to we I just showed you this. I just I, what is this? We know how many people are going to get according to this, the top doctor in Alberta. This is the numbers there. And we know it gives people myocarditis. That's why all those countries stop using the Moderna one. But if you had your way, you would have mandated people get oh, that one and they would have got. No, if that's what do you mean? Wait a minute. That's true. If I right? had my way. Okay. You would mandate so everyone get the it. vaccine, I'll- right? If you had your way, you would mandate everyone get it, right? If I had my way, I would I mandate it. Yeah, I would hope everybody would do the right thing. Yeah, but would you yeah. if they didn't? Yeah, I would mandate it. There, you got me. Oh, you got me. There. I'm not. Tra- I'm just asking you a straight question, Graham. I'm not trying. That's yeah. not a gotcha. I'm asking. That's and, a straight up question. This, How is that a gotcha well, question? That's just a question. Would you okay. mandate it for everybody if you had the power to? And you said you would. And I'm like, well, we know people are going to be getting injured from it all over. And and we know people are going to die from COVID. More people are going to yeah, die. Yeah, but from that's COVID. up to them to decide. You can't decide someone else has to take a fucking medical treatment. If you think the vaccine protects you from the disease, then you get the fucking vaccine. You can't make someone else take a, a, a medical treatment to save you, A, because it doesn't. Okay, let me ask you this question. It, uh, Graham, you if know you're going to get the virus. You know you're going to get it. Who do you care who you get it from? First of all, if it's Omicron, that's probably the one I'm going to... If it's Delta... And the minute I get it, I would quarantine. What about all these people that are like, get it, don't care, don't test. They're in the hospital beds dying. And the nurses, all these videos of people saying, I don't, I don't have it while they die. There's the Herman Cain Awards, all these pro anti vax these people, I don't want to get it. I don't like mandates. And then they get it and die. And it's hurt their family members. It's hurt their family. They've spread it to other people. Because again, if you're unvaccinated, you're more likely to spread a more severe version of it. Are you okay giving it to someone and they die and you don't? Uh, you can spread the virus. I'm I'm vaccinated, but I'm not, I'm not getting a booster. And if someone else feels that they need to be protected from the vaccine, they should get vaccinated. That's what they should do. That that has nothing to do with me. And but yes, I'm just that no, I'm asking you a direct question. If you uh, since you're not going to get the booster and you get it and you give it to somebody and they die, are you okay with that? Yeah, I, I, if, if if someone dies from COVID, because we're all going to get COVID. That's my fault. How is that my fault if someone gets COVID because we're all going to get COVID and somehow now it's someone else's fault when someone dies from COVID? It's someone else's fault? Up That's until fucking, this point, do you understand unva- how that is just divisive bullshit? Oh, Jimmy. I'm serious, Graham. I'm, I can say that to you. I don't think it's divisive bullshit. I think it's it's selfishness. You're America's blaming self- someone's... Di- Hold on. All these countries where this where this was not politicized because America politicized it, right? Joanne Reed under Trump, when Trump said, I'm going to have 100 million vaccines by the end of the year, she puts on Twitter something to the effect of, oh, I'm not taking that. You first. Biden gets into office. Suddenly she likes the vaccine. Puerto Rico, they didn't politicize this. 90% vaccination rate, they don't have these problems. So, so again, the hospitals were full of unvaccinated. Co- I haven't heard you answer this direct question. What about all of the unvaccinated COVID patients with the Delta variant? And then you couldn't get access to a hospital. You showed me some statistic, but you didn't answer me directly. What would happen if you were denied access to a hospital? And you say, we're all going to get it. We're all going to get what? Omicron, which isn't as, isn't as bad. Okay. Or the vaccinated, because we're, if more people were vaccinated, we're all, you just say, we're all going to get it. Like, 
it's the levels of how we get in. If you're vaccinated, you're less likely to get hospitalized. Yes, Greg, that's for you. But again, you you keep conflating shit. No, me, you don't care about other people dying. It no, sounds like Graham. <laughs> okay, well, I'll just leave it there because okay, uh, we're, we're going around into this. Yes, everybody's going to get it. You can catch it and spread it if you are vaccinated. So I, I'm vaccinated. I can get it and spread it. Now it's my fault that someone else dies. It's not as severe if what? you're vaccinated. You keep pointing these things and then you skip over. This is the thing. You no, keep, you what do you mean? Watch what's not? You. What's you not as severe? What's not as severe, Graham? What is not as severe? Hospitalized. That's not as severe. Yeah. Getting it and just having flu-like symptoms and having Graham, to stay home. But like if again, you you're conflating flu. the two ideas. I say How? if you you're. What is someone else getting vaccinated have to do with me being hospitalized? So they if I get COVID unvaccinated, so I guess, I guess what you're saying, maybe correct me if I'm wrong. So if all the unvaccinated people get the most, everyone's going to get it, but the va- unvaccinated are going to get the more severe version. So more than who are says that hospitalized and die. Correct? No, right? oh, no, that's first of all, what do you mean? No. First of all, we don't know. How do you know that the unvaccinated are all going to get Delta? Now, Omicron, they say, is going to take over. I didn't say I didn't say Delta or Omicron. I said you said Delta, the more serious version of it. You just said Delta. Okay, or Omicron. We don't even know how Omicron's new. Maybe it'll be worse. Maybe the first wave is easier. But then when it hits the unvaccinated, it's going to kill more people. So let's say whatever Delta, Omicron, whatever the fuck new one they come up with, just COVID. Let's just say COVID. So unvaccinated people are more likely to get sick and to be hospitalized. Yes. So what you're saying, it's their choice. And if all those people die and the vaccinated just get mild versions of it and don't have to be and don't die, you're OK with that. I, I, yeah, I don't know what I, I honestly I, yeah. I'm not trying to be a dick. I don't understand your point. My point is the unvaccinated are making it more risky on themselves than anybody else that's unvaccinated. They're making it more risky on people who who have preexisting conditions and can't get vaccinated. If you're a health. And, and so you're I'm saying more there's more covid deaths than adverse reactions. You know, co- dying from COVID is an adverse reaction to COVID. So if you're just saying, hey, unvaccinated people, it's your choice. And if you get you get COVID and die, eh, fine. Is that what you're saying? Yes. If people are unvaccinated, it's their okay. choice. It's their choice to not be vaccinated. Okay. And then if, and then if they get COVID have- and died, it's their choice. And so- since 40% of the country is unvaccinated, and let's say Omicron is a lot worse, and Delta and Omicron together cause this perfect storm. So 40% of the country doesn't want to get vaccinated, and they shouldn't be mandated, okay, according to you. So 40% of the country is unvaccinated, all right? So that's three times four is, what, 120 million people. So then they're all, the majority of them, or a high percentage of them, or even one to three percent of them, which is a lot of people, are in all the hospitals. So all the hospitals are overrun. So all those people die. You don't care if they die. And then all so the people just, that die because they didn't have COVID but couldn't get access to a hospital, you're okay with them dying too? So you're just making up numbers. Because <laughs> no, the, the hospitalization rate is 0.89%. You just said 1% to 3%. We all know the Omicron now, for every piece of evidence, shows it's a very mild version. Well, and right there's, now. Uh, and so again, the point of it is, it doesn't prevent transmission gram if you get the if you're vaccinated and you get covid and someone is unvaccinated and they get covid you both spread the fucking virus okay so no you agree 20 million people that's the 40 percent unvaccinated times 0.08 that's your number so maybe my numbers were too high 10 million 10.8 million people in hospitals you don't think that's going to cause a disaster in this country graham what, uh, let's let's let okay okay answer that question that that uh if there's if yeah if we run out of hospital beds it'll be a disaster in this country yes okay and yeah, if, if we run out of hospital beds people. yes that'll be a dis- that'll be a disaster are we gonna run out of hospital beds and if we do why the fuck by the way why did more people anyway so let's keep these one at a time we got to keep okay. them one at a time i have a oh i gotta go i have another guest god damn it i'm sorry i'm sorry garland nixon is up next um, oh. but let me, let me, let me, let me finish this with you, Graham. All right. Let me finish. We can, we've been talking for an hour and 15 it's, or 20. It's been pretty good. It's been pretty it's like good. It. I like it. It's been pretty good. So if you get COVID and you're vaccinated and someone's unvaccinated and gets COVID, you both can spread the virus. And the, the science is you both have the same viral load for the first seven days. So now you're going to mandate somebody get a vaccine for what? So if because if you get COVID, 
You still can transmit it as much. And everyone's going to get a version. So that's the problem I have. And you you keep saying hospital beds. That's not an answer to that question. <laughs> I That's what drives me nuts, Jimmy. Because you just skipped over the fact that unvaccinated people are more likely to get hospitalized. I just use your numbers. That is so true. It, yeah, but what is so? But what? So you're saying you should mandate? Uh, let me. It's an nightmare. So, so you're saying you should mandate a vaccine because of hospital beds? Yes. That's crazy. Uh, we should maybe That's, get more hospital beds. <laughs> That's what we should okay. do instead you of doing. Fight for more hospital beds. <laughs> well, here's the reality. Jimmy. <laughs> I agree with you. We don't have as many hospital beds. We need more. I totally agree with you with that. The neoliberals at fucking Cuomo, all those guys, they've Pelosi, they've taken it out. The reality is we don't. So how do we deal with this immediate problem right now? So I, I just want to let you know about mandates uh, before I go. Uh, here, this is what Dr. Fauci thought a year ago. And do you foresee that the vaccine might be mandated for any populations, perhaps for um, school age children? No, I don't think you'll ever see a mandating of vaccine, particularly for the general public. Sometimes in the health sector, like in my hospital here at NIH, uh, you're not going to be allowed to go on the ward unless you get a flu vaccine. Mandate. But you would never mandate. At least I do not think you would. <laughs> uh, I'd be pretty uh, surprised if you mandated it for any element of the general public. Now, as a primary care physician myself, who's had many conversations around vaccine safety with patients, I'm curious, what what's our contingency plan for people who might refuse the vaccine? Well, I mean, they have every right to refuse vaccine. I don't think you need a contingency plan. If someone refuses the vaccine in the general public, then th there's nothing you can do about that. You cannot force someone to take a vaccine. Right. So I'm going to I'll give you the last word, Graham. I appreciate you coming on. Um, and we could we could we should do this more often, actually. I, I, I don't think we're done. I think we could do this more. I think, Jimmy, that's I'm, I appreciate you having me on the show. And you're my friend of 30 years. And I love you. And you're my friend before you had a YouTube show. And if you've lost everything, which I would never wish upon you, I would still be your friend. If you stopped doing this, you became a gardener. I'd still be your friend. So um and I love we can have this debate. I would love to see more people because sometimes I'm I I feel like maybe the last couple of months you've only had people on your show that agree with you, and I don't think that's a healthy thing. That's just my as, as your friend. I think you should have more people that not to have arguments. I mean, I don't like yelling fights. It, it kind of got at that towards the end, and I'm I'm part, I kinda I'm, like part it. I'm part to blame. I was hoping for more. I, I kind of like it. I, it's okay, <laughs> honest. It's okay. It's all it's right. okay. It's okay to get frustrated. People yell at games all the time. Right. It's okay to yell at a fucking Dodger game. It's okay to yell about vaccine mandates and the most important things in the world. It's, it's We're both passionate because we give a shit. That's, that's right. That's why we're lefties. We that's care. right. And I just and can't believe how wrong you are. <laughs> oh, God, Jimmy. I just can't believe you don't give a so, shit that 10 million people uh, are going to die. And you're like, ha, ha. Like, I can't so, believe you turned into a Nazi. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you said Fucking Graham. All right, Graham, I got to go. It's rude to my next guest. I hope he's still available. And we'll do this again for sure, Graham. Let's, we didn't finish. We have more shit to say. We got more shit to say. Fauci just said mandates. Are, he, he would mandate flu vaccines on his ward, so they've been there for a while. <laughs> okay. <So>. Okay. <laughs> All right, buddy. Graham Elwood, so everybody check. Me check. Out .com. Thanks, man. All right. Thank you, Graham. Take care. Everybody come see our live stand-up shows. We're coming to Raleigh, North Carolina at the end of January and Philadelphia in February. See you there.